Making Rubber Molds for Casting Resin by Lucy Hansen of Cascade Miniatures of Oregon. To begin with, it would help for you to know what the supplies are going to be that you'll need. Calloused and RTV. This is a rather large container. Um, I usually use one of these large containers and a small bottle of the side B in about a year. Um, it does come smaller. That is a four pound. The RTV comes in a one pound container, but I used most of that today. It's white gooey stuff very sticky. That particular container was $20.50. This big four pound container was $69.25 and I got it from Tap Plastics. The next thing that you're going to need is a scale. The scale, when you turn it on, you can see that it will zero itself out. It's gaining weight as we talk. The next thing that you'll need is two clear plastic glasses. Now these are um, a little large for what I'm going to do now, but better that they're large than too small. The other thing that you will need is a popsicle stick or a stirring stick of some sort. I get my sticks whoops, from um, Joann's. You'll go through quite a few of these because you can only use it one time. The next thing you'll need is a pair of rubber gloves. Um, we buy them by the box at Harbor Freight, and uh, you use them once and you pitch them. The next thing that you'll need is tape, a double face tape. I use either glue dots, uh, carpet tape. And this is the latest product that I have tried. It's called Fast Cap. Um, and there is a phone number. It is one of the best two sided tapes that I have ever used. The reason that you'll use this or what you will use it for is to attach your original that you're going to copy onto a base. I highly recommend do not use the thicker adhesives like this two-sided uh, industrial tape. It is too thick and it will raise your um, original up off of the base just enough to change the dimensions. The other thing that you'll need is masking tape. You'll see that used here in a little bit. The other thing that you'll need is an assortment of pieces of plexiglass. Uh, Dick and I use plexiglass for our product and I just save all the little pieces and uh, when I need uh, something for my base uh, for my mold, I grab out of the mix-up drawer, I just grab one of these pieces. Uh, that one's already been stuck. And I peel off one Let's do it on this one, the face. I peel off one side. I see I've got the side off of that. You can peel it off. Let's peel it off of both sides. Um, that is going to be the base for my original. But you'll need some of these. They come out about 10 cents a square inch is about what it costs. The 
next fun thing that you'll need is Legos. Now, yes, you can use a different wall or retaining wall around your um, model, but I have found that Legos are inexpensive enough to where I will use the two bys. This is two by two, two by three, and two by four, and two by eight. Using those as opposed to this, these are not wide enough to give you a good solid retain wall. So I use the two buys. You can get on eBay. Um, of course, you can order them from Lego, but you're going to pay a lot more. Um, you can use for a retaining wall. You can use just about anything you want to. But you'll see uh, through the demonstration that this is the easiest uh, retaining wall that is reusable. Um, and once you buy them, you, you, you never have to buy them again. When mixing your uh, rubber and your catalyst combined, I mentioned that you're going to need two clear bla uh, glasses. I could get away with using this, but you'll soon see why I don't. Um, make sure that if you are using paper cups, that you use one that is not wax coated. Let's go ahead and mix up um, some product. I'm going to open the lid uh, to the rubber. As I said, it's pretty sticky stuff. That's what it looks like on the inside. I have pre stirred it. So I won't have, that's one job I won't have to do right now. One of the, I use pretty good sized stick. And I'm going to use one of the plastic cups for the white. Now, the way that you do your plastic cups or your measuring cups, is, and this is why you have two of the same thing, you place your cup on the scale, turn the scale on. Let me get this so you can see it. Now, I'm looking at a little, um, about one-tenth of an ounce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit zero and make sure that that starts at zero. And we're going to take some of this very sticky liquid rubber. This is the not so fun part of this. I think I'm going to try the one to one. Ver um, I'm going to also see if I can pour it. There is, this is, this um, particular rubber is mixed 10 to 1, so, and that's by weight. So I'm going to drop I'm also going to move this over so you can see what I'm doing. I'll pour some of this into the glass. Whoops. The weight is going up. I want approximately 10 ounces by weight. And I got almost that now. Okay. I am sitting at 14.22. Um, I'm going to get this up. 
Okay, we're looking at 14.22, now 23. It's very touchy. So I'm going to want 1.42 and a little bit of the blue catalyst, which is one tenth of what's in there. Always shake your catalyst to keep it stirred. 14.2. I put this back on there. I make sure that it is at zero. And let's go up to 14.2. This is one liquid you don't want to drop on a bunch of stuff. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen point two. And now I mix the two. Have yourself a, a, a good trash barrel handy, or I use, um, I use Ziploc bags to seal these cups in after I get through with them. As you see, this is thinning out. Mix it very thoroughly. It has to be all one color. And the reason I use a clear glass is as you can see, it's leaving a lot of the white along the edge. If you don't mix it thoroughly, you'll have one heck of a mess that is not solid. You will have a mold that is not solid. It's uh, liquid in some places. And you'll have to do it all over again and you will have wasted the amount that it took to make this mold. It's starting to turn all the same color. Make sure you scrape the sides And again, check the bottom. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm also introducing air bubbles unintentionally, but they're, they're going to be there. Um, after I pour the mold, uh, I pour this all into a mold, what will happen is the air bubbles will work their way to the top. Again, I scrape the sides. I don't see any streaks of white in that. Looking pretty good. Are we going to set it aside? And we're going to discuss the original. The reason that you're making a mold 
is to make a lot of one thing. I needed a, a bathtub in one of my quarter scale uh, products, or actually my trailer. I needed a very small bathtub with a shower. So first I got a piece of wood and I cut out and carved my bathtub. That's my original. I made one mold out of that, a small mold, and I made an, a model. From that, I made several models, three of them in fact, and three sinks. And then with that, I made this mold. And as you can see, the original, fits down inside of the mold. I keep it that way so that I am aware of where my original is and the very first one that I made from the original. Once you get your original made, let's go to the second one. I wanted to make some ceiling globes So I took a piece of plexiglass. This is plexiglass underneath that. The piece of plexiglass, I took some beads, faceted beads, and I flattened one side, and I glued these beads down to the plexiglass with um, fast cap tape, a small piece. What you want to do is make sure that when you're pouring on top of that, all of your mold rubber that it doesn't force this to move. You want, once it gets on there, you want it to stay in that spot. Uh, you want um, probably, uh, actually this is a little tight, you really kind of want about a half inch of open space all the way around the outside and about a half inch of space between the items. Um, on this one, I backed it with a piece of wood to give it a little bit of thickness. You don't have to. Uh, this plexiglass is pretty durable. Once you get your originals down on your uh, plexiglass or your base, then you're going to have to build a mold, I mean a, a retaining wall around it. So. I'm using Legos as my retaining wall. This is where a little bit of fun is had because you're going to find out how frustrating it can be. Uh, to try to match up and make sure that you have the proper amount of, oops, I see I've got a little bit of rubber on this one. You want to make sure that you don't have any ends protruding once you get your rectangle built. Now once you've done that, then you're going to have to build the second layer because obviously if I poured rubber on top of that, it would spill over on the edges. So we, this is a retaining wall. So what we're going to do is put the second level. When you put the second level on, make sure that you cover all of the seams underneath. Again, this is where a certain amount of fun comes in. I'm covering this seam with the two by three. That seam will be covered. Oops. This seam uh, will be covered. Oops, 
I'm going to cover this seam with the two. Uh oh. I need a four. These Legos come in assorted lengths. We now have the second layer. Once you get this made carefully, pick up your mold, your retaining wall. Uh oh. <laughs> I messed up. That's better. Okay. Now once you get your retaining wall done very carefully, get your one inch masking tape. And join I kind of have it since you don't want to lay it down flat. I still have that one seam. Now, I should not have that one seam, but we're going to go with it. Once you do that, then you turn it over. And run tape so that it straddles the inside edge. on all four sides. Carefully turn it over. Take your mold, uh, your form base, and drop it in and press it against that tape. Now this is pretty solid. It's also got leftover rubber from being poured. You will use a good mold you'll use several times. Uh, generally speaking, you can get approximately 15 to 20 uses. A lot depends on um, the freshness of your, um, your mold making substance. Okay, now we're ready to pour this. Notice how, oops, we still got some white. Notice how the bubbles had worked their way to the top. This uh, particular load of, of, of silicone rubber is about five months old. So it's going, it is a little thicker than it usually is. We're going to pour it. Don't get in a hurry in pouring. 
Let it seek its own level. I like to work with the rubber that is thinner because you can get a, it takes a little bit longer to set, but it uh, gives a better detail. If you're looking for a lot of good detail and fine detail and undercutting, you really kind of want to use a, a more liquid rubber. This is called silicone, it's not latex. Latex is real rubber coming from trees. Silicone is a chemical or a series of chemicals. Now in time, this will flatten out. You don't want any air bubbles on the mold itself, um, near the um, original. Bounce it so that you're forcing those air bubbles up. You're also forcing the um, rubber close to and to go around, completely go around and encompass the model, the original model. Boy, I can sure tell this is old enough to wear. I'm gonna have to use it up pretty soon. Now I've got a little bit left. So what I generally do is I keep some of my shallow originals. I keep them handy. Uh, let's take this out and show you. This is not very deep, so this won't take much rubber to make and I've got this all prepared ahead of time. It won't take much rubber to go completely around uh, this model. So let's set this one aside and use the rest of this. And by now you should have all figured out that I forgot to put the gloves on. And that's a no-no. I'm being careful not to get any of this on me. It won't hurt me if I do. I mean, it washes off, but it's really not a good idea. The um, silicone formula that is sold by Micromark is one to one instead of 10 to one, and it goes by volume. So you just put a measuring point on your paper cup and you put equal amounts of the exact same, uh, of the two different uh, chemicals. Uh, it's still A and B. This is what you fight when you've had this in, on hand a lot longer than you should. It does have a shelf life. Also, you don't want it to get cold. And I see I still have a lot of white in there. And I'm gonna, probably gonna be pay for that tomorrow when I uh, try to demold this. Now I got a corner here that's
that will be flat tomorrow. It's very slow in leveling. And you really want it flat because you're going to be pouring uh, your um, chemicals to make your mold making substance in this and you want it to lay flat. Now, this is what happens and I don't think you can see it. Can you see the bubbles? And I'll point them out. Uh, when I find a pencil. You can see right here. There's a gap. There's a couple of gaps on the underneath and you can see where these air bubbles have trapped. That will reflect when you when we get ready to um, make our acrylics. I'm going to take this apart. This is one we did today. Finding the end of the tape. There will be rubber that'll vulcanize or solidify on top. And it's okay to, to break that off. I'm gonna break these away from the mold. We did this earlier today. Now I've got the base with the originals and the rubber mold. What I'm going to do, I generally do before I, I trim off the excess. Because I want this to lay flat. Now comes the fun. Peeling the rubber away. from the plexiglass. And I have the original and the copy. But if you can see in the copy, I've got these little air bubble holes. I will have, end up having to fill those. Uh, when I pour them, when I pour the acrylic in there, it'll fill that spot. Um, it'll fill any of the voids that are there and then I will have to clean them up. But that is a mold that we made today. I do have instructions printed out. Let me clean up my mess here. I do have instructions printed out. I typed them up today. And I will be happy to email a copy of this. It has the list of the supplies, the steps for making it, the terminology, 
and recommended viewing and sources. So if you really would like to have a copy of this, I have it in PDF format and I'll be happy to send it to you for nothing. All you have to do is email me, hansonminis at me.com. Thank you for taking the time to learn about making rubber molds for casting resin.